Hi, it's the Three Minute Sociologist again, and today I'd like to look at social problems, but more specifically, I'd like to look at what is sociology's contribution to studying social problems. I mean, after all, you can look on the internet or pick up a newspaper, and it's full of problems that are facing society or the world. So what's the value of looking at it sociologically? Well, I got to start with C. Wright Mills on that one. Mills provided us some really good insights as to the difference between a personal trouble and a public issue. Rather than go into a long diatribe about that, let's just make it simple. Suppose you're coming to work today or going to school and you picked up a nail in your tire. Now, now you got a flat tire and now you got a personal problem. Because what happened? Well, you're going to be late. You're going to be late to work. You're going to have to deal with the tire. It's just a pain. Yeah, but the other side of it is it's personal. It's your problem. It's not a collective structural thing. Something that collect, it's collective in damage. Let's take a look at the difference then between taking that idea further. Uh, the difference between a good civics course and a sociological social problems course. In a good civics course, uh, you're going to get an in-depth discussion of things like poverty and governmental issues, and economics, unemployment, those kinds of issues. And certainly that's important. But in a sociological course, you're going to find out that those things are probably all connected to one another. There's something deeper that binds poverty, unemployment, but even family issues to one another. Secondly, in a sociological course, you're going to probably find that sociologists are looking for the root causes of problems. At the base, why did things happen this way? And both of those issues are critically important in understanding why problems occur. Now, while we're at it, let's take a look, because there's another thing that the sociological course will provide when looking at social problems. It really provides us some criteria for judging a social situation and determining whether that truly is problematic. And for example, if we looked at the rate of poverty in a country, or we looked at its unemployment rate. Well, that in and of itself may not be a problem. It's certainly a social fact. It's something that exists to the best of our ability to measure it. But whether it's a problem, well, that's another issue. My good colleague, Linda Weber, in her analysis of social problems, lists four criteria for social problems. And, and she's not the only one. There are many other sociologists who have lists, but I like these four. First of all, if something is a social problem, it's social in origin. In other words, collective in its base. It's social in damage. That means that a lot of people are affected. And it's social in definition. That means we collectively define it that way. And last but not least, if you want to fix it, it's social in, in solution. We've got to work together to fix it. Okay. Now, a social situation or a social fact is not intrinsically problematic. It just is. And sociology can help you assess a social situation to determine if it's problematic. Let me give you quick, three quick ways by using the three basic theories in sociology, functionalism, conflict, and interactionism. First, a person might ask the question, is there a gap between what a system should do and what it really does? That's a functionalist view. Then, we might ask, is there a battle over the scarce resources that, and are people being exploited through a use of power? That's a problem. And if you're a conflict theorist, you probably see problems that way. Or, are we just defining a situation as problematic? I mean, it's problematic because we say it is. Well, that's an interactionist view. Let me take aging as an example. Throughout most of the Western world, and also in areas like Japan, um, Europe, and the United States, we find that the population is aging. Well, 
an aging population is just a social fact. I mean, that's the way it is. But is that a problem? Well, it's a problem if you take a functionalist view, if there's a gap between what social systems can provide and what aging people will need. And how many of them are there? And how many can that system support under certain sets of expectations? We, of course, can see that in the uh, in U.S., for example, there is massive concern about Medicare programs, uh, health programs for the elderly, as well as Social Security programs. Were those systems set up to deal with the large number of old people who will be coming into those systems over the next 10 to 15 years? If there's a gap between what the system can provide and what it needs, then we got a problem. Taking aging a step further and looking at it from a conflict view, is there a battle over scarce resources? Finds fascinating kinds of things when we look at uh, who should get the jobs. Are the old people holding onto those jobs longer? Are they uh, at the at the sake of younger folks not getting jobs? Um, are we treating old people different simply because they can't uh, fend for themselves? Um, are they being exploited as a portion of society? If that's the case, then we've got a conflict view. And then last, have we just decided that aging is a problem because we've collectively defined it that way? That suddenly old people are the problem? Well, if we've done that, Maybe we've looked at it from an interactionist view. Well, okay, that's it for today. I hope you see now that sociology can really make a great contribution in understanding social problems. Take care and have a good day.